Hello and welcome to the Cat House. This is Mr. Meowzalot, and this week I read Half Earth by E. O. Wilson. Half Earth by E. O. Wilson is a response to the problem of climate change. Uh, E.O. Wilson, or Edward O. Wilson, is an entomologist, meaning that he specializes in insects as a biologist. Uh, he is seminal in his field. He's been writing uh, since the 1960s, and he uh, teaches at Ivy League schools, and he's referenced in pretty well anything to do with evolution or uh, climate change or environmental problems. Um, he is extremely passionate about his work. Um, it's a wonderful read just for that. It'll get you interested in the insect world. Um, he's fascinated by it and he makes you interested. Uh, that's the one thing you want in a book. Um, he approaches climate change and conservation and sustainable development from the point of view that we need to expand what we're doing tremendously. And the title says Half Earth. He wants us to uh, put aside half the Earth, not cut the planet in half, and one half is to be saved, and the other half, you know, industrialized. He does go about looking at different regions, areas of the planet that need to be conserved, um, but in a very large scale. Uh, and he does so by looking at the unique characteristics of each environment and the number of species that uh, probably exist there and, are, and that need to be kept in order to maintain um, the food chain there, basically. Um, there's the, the circle of life that he continually talks about. And he criticizes conservation for concentrating on the large, cute uh, species that are going extinct. and proposes that we need to start looking at the detailed world of what he's focused on is entomology. Because as he keeps repeating in the book, there's about two million species that are recorded, but there's another three or six million that we don't even know about yet. And as we willy-nilly go about polluting the world and causing the climate to change and industrializing, we're causing tremendous numbers of species to go extinct and we haven't even recorded them or studied them yet. And this is detrimental because as each species goes extinct, it creates more and more of a possibility that it'll start to affect us as humans and our livelihood. He, in the first parts of the book, references uh, this book here, The Sixth Extinction, and he uses the Anthropocene Era and the Sixth Extinction. This is a wonderful book by uh, Elizabeth Colbert. And if you want to know more about what he talks about in the first couple of chapters, this is the book to read. It's talking about how the Anthropocene Era, the, how human uh, humanity is causing the extinction of animals and species, and how uh, our in industrialization and our transportation and everything is causing invasive species to go across the world and change the prey-predator dynamics and it's the pollution of our chemicals and everything like that is just totally fucking up the world um, in, in a way that we don't even realize and don't even see and may not even know about until it suddenly snaps the chain and sends us into a spiral. Um, his book also really reminded me of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Uh, this is a 1960s book, um, seminal in any type of uh, literature or study of the environment and human causes of climate change. Because Rachel Carson was one of the first women in her field uh, and had to fight the actual patriarchy of the time to get herself known and she studied how in detail the smaller creatures of the food train 
affect us later down the food chain and how chemical pollutants need to be controlled because as they affect worms and stuff, uh, that then affects, and there's Stinkadoo. Come on, Stinky, you're going to affect the camera. Oh, no. Uh, um, wow, I know. Welcome to the cat house, right? Oh, poofy tail. Good girl. Um, and so we need to be careful of how we pollute the, the world because it'll end up polluting us. Um, this led to the environmental movement, Rachel Carson's book, and then to Our Common Future, which was a global scientific study done in the 1980s, um, which first came up with the, the uh, concept of sustainable development, which is being able to industrialize but maintain the capability of the earth to uh, keep us alive. Uh, Half Earth is recommending a form of sustainable development, but on a very large scale. Um, O.E. Wilson is, uh, you know, this is his latest book. It's 2016, his book here. Um, and it may be his last. He's written probably two dozen books. Uh, but he's very sort of optimistic about humanity and that humanity will, given the argument and logic, change their lifestyle and do the right thing. Well, he's a little too optimistic, I think. I've read some other books that, you know, show the extent to which we will need to change our lifestyles, and it, it, it's a tremendous change. Uh, it, it reminds me of Naomi Klein, who's a Canadian journalist. She wrote uh, The Shock Doctrine, which he's very well known for, uh, but this is uh, Capitalism versus the Climate. This changes everything um, in which she discusses how uh, I think one of her chapters is called The Right is Right, meaning the, the right wing. And it goes into, it's not just about denying climate change, that's simplistic. It's the fact that uh, you know, the, the people who have libertarian views fear that climate policy will infringe on lifestyle so tremendously, and this is why she calls it, this changes everything. It's because she sees uh, the lifestyle changes that will need to be done as a complete reform of the capitalist system of dietary habits, of transportation habits, of everything that we do will have to change. And that kind of climate policy is very, very difficult in a democracy because we like the way we live and they're asking us to regress. And that's why the conservatives uh, are hesitant to embrace any kind of climate policy because no one's going to vote for it. Do we need to do it, though? Yes. And if you look at James Lovelock, uh, the man who came up with the theory of Gaia, uh, James Lovelock has been writing since the 1960s. He's an independent scientist. And after a dozen books about his Gaia theory, which entails the planet will be fine because it will adapt to us and get rid of the rash that's causing climate change, meaning the planet will destroy humans in order to revert back to its normal state. Um, he doesn't say that it's going to destroy humanity completely. He says that basically between 100 million and a billion will survive. Um, after serious migrations north because the climate is changing so much that everyone will have to migrate north um, in order to survive. But basically, 90% of humanity will die, um, at which point our will regress civilizationally and then the planet will be able to readapt to its normal conditions. He basically says, 
cash in your pensions because there's no more chance. He's basically given up on us after 12 books and decades of trying to convince us that this is a problem. Um, and the future of climate change is uh, looked at by Gwen Dyer, another Canadian journalist, under his book Climate Wars, in which he envisions through looking at the various predictions of scientists and military about what the future holds under climate change, and it's uh, pretty bleak. Um, basically, uh, conflicts over resources and massive migrations of people will cause untold border skirmishes and all-out warfare to defend uh, you know our, our borders and nations and and civilization. Uh, pretty bleak indeed. Um, this is something that the military in many countries has already have already taken on board. The fact that uh, national security interests are going to be determined uh, by the way that the climate changes. Uh, shocking, shocking stuff. So. What we have is E.O. Wilson saying this is how we fix the problem. We save and conserve vast amounts and regions of the world and we can do it, he says. Um, I find him a little naive about humanity. Uh, he's a little too optimistic for my taste. However, the book is fantastic. It's uh, a really interesting read if you're if you don't know much about insects and the, the little world that lives under our noses, uh, it's really, really interesting. I loved how he goes into and he repeatedly talks about uh, like the arms race between these insects and stuff and how they've adapted and the evolution that's happened for them to uh, be within their food chain and to, you know the self-defense that they have uh, adapted and evolved. Uh, really, really interesting. Um, he he talks a, a great deal about you know the, the the species that we've lost already, and the uh, species that are going in near extinction. And oh, now we have Gray. Hello, Gray. Say hello. Hey, buddy. See his little floppy ears, eh? Anyways, um, it was an excellent book. Um, I'd never read E.O. Wilson before, and I uh, I, I might again. Uh, um, I'd, he, he specializes in ants, and so I think I'd really like to read his books that are specific to his specialty because his passion is just leaking through the pages. Um, keep reading. Until next time, this is Mr. Mirzlot from the Cat House. Take care. Bye-bye. Say bye, Gray. Yeah, what a cutie you are.